let's continue where we finished our last video with component did mount. You know this happens after the component has rendered and in this lifecycle method you can do something you may want to happen after the component has rendered. Change the DOM, manipulate the DOM, do whatever you want after the component has rendered in component did mount. And to show this I'm just going to do a quick example. We're going to use this, so this, the keyword this in this case represents our lifecycle component and I'm just going to do interval equals set interval and if you're not familiar with this set interval method it simply takes as its first parameter a function you want to call so in our case it's going to be the increment function so this dot increment and the next is just the time so 1000 is one second all this means is that once the component is rendered and component did mount gets called this dot interval will start and then every second this dot increment will be called head on to the browser and check that out so refresh and we can see that the counter is going up and that's because every second this dot increment gets called because the component did mount function is called when the component is rendered nice and simple now the final one we're going to look at is component will unmount so number six and it only happens once as well and it's after component has rendered obviously now component will unmount is kind of self-explanatory I guess in a lot of ways just type it out function okay so this happens when the component is about to unmount so did mount means that the component has rendered the component has mounted i.e. it's now in the browser in the DOM you can see it you can use it when you want to remove that component from the DOM so when the component is going to be unmounted this method gets called now to show this we're actually going to need to remove our component from the DOM we're going to need to remove our lifecycle component and to do this we're going to create a containing component let's go ahead and do that now so var life cycle container obviously we're going to use react dot create class and make a line there so inside this we're going to have our render function obviously hopefully this is all really familiar now uh, let's console dot log lifecycle container rendered and then we're simply going to return a div close that off inside the div we're going to have a button with an on click event again hopefully you are familiar with this and are using it in your own components now which is going to say mount and this is simply going to mount our component so we can see exactly what happens there and another button another on click event and this dot unmount and text and close that off all we're going to have is two buttons one to mount the component and one to unmount the component nice and simple now to mount our component we're going to use the react dom library and the render method which you've also used before and as you can see here you need to specify the component 
and then you also need to specify where it's going to get rendered. And we're actually going to create a separate div in our containing component. We'll give it an ID of render here. And we'll close that off. So in the mount function, we are going to render our lifecycle component to the div of the ID of render here. So we're going to reuse the React DOM and the render method. Let's go ahead and create our mount function. So function, okay. And all we're going to do in here is use React DOM dot render. And of course the first argument is the what. So in our case, we're going to render our life cycle component. Close that off. So of course we're going to be rendering this component here that we've already created. And we're going to render it to the div with the ID of render here. So document dot get element by ID and the ID is render here. Simple. All that's going to happen is when we click this button, our component, our lifecycle component is going to get rendered to this div here. I'm actually going to comment out the unmount one so we can check this out. And don't forget that at the moment we are rendering the lifecycle component to the div of the ID of app, whereas we actually want to render the container. So let's go ahead and change that. So we're now going to render this container to the div of the ID of app. And then when we click the mount button, we should render the lifecycle component. Save that, head on over to the browser, refresh. Obviously our counter was still going there and I've made an error. Let's check out what I've done. So 44, number six. So this is all minified, so it's gonna be higher than that. And I think I've missed the comma at the end of component did mount. So obviously it's gonna throw an error because this is breaking stuff. So save that. Don't forget the comma. Back on over, refresh, and there we go. Oh, our comments have messed up a little bit there, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So when we click mount, we get our button. And there we go, it starts counting obviously. So you can see how we can mount a component within another component, which is great. So you can actually call the React DOM render method within another component, which is brilliant. So now, uncomment this and let's create the unmount method. So unmount is a function. Don't forget the comma. So what do you think we're gonna do in this method? Obviously, we're gonna try and unmount the component, our lifecycle component. To do this, we use the React DOM library and then we use a method called unmount component at node. And then we pass in document dot get element by ID of render here. And put a semicolon on the end there. The unmount component at node method simply takes the DOM elements you want to remove your component from. So the DOM node, and we're just gonna pass in the elements with the ID of render here, and then the React DOM library is gonna unmount that from the DOM for us. Save this, head on back over to the browser. Obviously our counter is still ticking down. Refresh, so we've got our two buttons here. So we can mount the component, the counter starts, and then we can unmount the component, and our component disappears, which is brilliant. Exactly what we want. 
head on back over to your text editor and let's put some comments, a console.log in our component will unmount. So console.log component unmounted. Now, one thing you want to do in a component will unmount is clear up anything that's going on within your component, within the DOM. Now, this example here, we have our interval. So every second, this dot increment gets called. Now, if we don't cancel that, it's just going to keep on happening, even after the component has unmounted. Obviously, nothing's going to happen, but that function is still going to get called. So what we need to do is just clear that interval. Clear interval. And all we do is pass in the interval we want to clear, which in our case is this dot interval. So all this does, all this function does is just clear this interval. So it gets rid of this basically. Nice and simple. Save this, head on back over to the browser, refresh, open up our developer tools so we can see what's going on. And you'll see that the first thing that happens is getting our default properties, which is a bit odd because We've not rendered our lifecycle component. One thing you need to know is that get default props not only occurs before our component is rendered, but happens when our class is created. This means that whenever we create a class, so whenever we can create a component class, and use get default props. So this happens before we even think about rendering it to the DOM. If you have a React class and use the get default props, the get default props method will happen before anything else. So before you even use the component. Just one thing to remember. Head on back over to the browser and we see that our lifecycle container is rendered. Obviously we're not using get default props, get initial states or component will mount in this component here, in the container. So we don't see anything from those just yet. Let's go ahead and press mount and we get our initial state. The component is mounting, the component is rendered the component has rendered and the component is re-rendering. So it's you know refreshing every time our interval gets called. So we get our default props, our lifecycle container is rendered, we get our initial state, the component will mount, component is rendered, component did mount, and of course this is happening again and again because our count is updating. Now, if we click unmount, our component is unmounted and our interval stops. If we go ahead and remove the clear interval, we will see that the interval continues to happen. Refresh, mount, so the count keeps on going unmount and you see what happens can only update a mounted or mounting component this means that if we don't clean things up like our interval when we unmount components they will continue to happen and we'll get an error or a warning which is not good we don't want that so of course we're going to Keep that in, save it, back onto the browser, mount our component, add a few counts ourselves, and then unmount. And the interval stops. Excellent. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like, share, and subscribe.
If you've got any comments, suggestions or ideas for videos, leave them in the comments below. Send me a tweet at Code with Tim or send me an email, codewithtim at gmail.com. <laughs>